Hey guys, welcome back to Stability Wad. Today I want to talk about runners and I want to talk about one of the most commonly missed variables when it comes to fixing injuries and to preventing injuries in running athletes. So runners are unique athletes. These are athletes that do um, repetitive movement over long distances. The speeds are relatively high. The impact forces are relatively high. And so there are lots of opportunities for running athletes to get into trouble. Even with subtle biomechanical inefficiencies, subtle deviations, runners can have breakdown over the course of time because of that high repetition, because of the impact forces, and because of the volume at which runners train. I find that a lot of running issues clear up with some basic manual therapies, especially to the lumbar spine, pelvis, and sacrum, because there tends to be a lot of dysfunction there. Generally, there's some mobility issues that need to be addressed. There also are some stability issues and muscle reactivation that needs to happen. But I find that with a subset of runners, even these fixes aren't quite enough, especially as the volume gets higher. As athletes, regardless of the sport, we get stability through our senses. We get stability through our vision, through our hearing, through our sense of touch, and through our ability to feel where we are in space, just to name a few. Proprioception is our ability to feel where our joints are in space. It's the feedback we get from our connective tissues, including our fascia, ligaments, joints, tendons. Um, without any visual feedback, these sensors communicate with our brain to tell us where we are. Now, our, vis our vision is very important. But when we're running and playing other sports, we don't have, um, we can't always rely on our vision alone to give us feedback because we're looking at a ball or we're looking at the trail or we're distracted by something else in the environment. So our spatial awareness is dependent on all this other information coming from the rest of our body. When we become visually dominant, suddenly the other system suffers. So even in those situations where we have sufficient strength and mobility to run well, if our proprioceptive system is not functioning well, we may have subtle uh, changes in our stability with every step that over the course of thousands of steps add up into some persistent overuse problem. So I want to show you today how you can address proprioception very easily in a very straightforward way to get you back on the road again. All right guys, here's the deal. Super easy test to figure out if your proprioception needs to be improved. So generally, you can stand on one leg, you can balance. You have probably pretty good stability. If you're having trouble with that, that's where you start. However, if you're good at this and you feel like you're relatively stable, there's not a lot of change in the position of your foot, you're gonna close your eyes and you're gonna see what changes. You're gonna see what happens. I have a little bend in my knee, so I'm in just a tiny little squat, so I'm in an active position. As I stand here with my eyes closed, I can still do a pretty good job of controlling my position. Now I just recently sprained my left ankle, so I'm gonna try it on my left side. I'm gonna feel how I balance with my eyes open, it's not so bad. And as soon as I close my eyes, we're gonna see what happens to my foot. You can see that I'm kinda of all over the place, and I'm not really doing a very good job of balancing, I actually fall out of it. Now, I'm already doing a good job of controlling my arch position, making sure that my foot is straight, I have a nice stable foot, I feel my big toe through the ground. I'm focusing on my big toe, little toe and heel, which is my tripod of my foot, so that I can really feel the ground. I'm also doing it with no shoes, which helps, uh, and on a firm surface, which helps uh, me get feedback, so um, I have more of a chance of being successful. What's cool about this is, if you're struggling with your eyes closed, and you can practice, very quickly, you're gonna find out where you're weak, which could be in your foot, could be in your lower leg, could be in your hip, but very quickly, you're gonna uh, find that you improve as you start to learn, and your joints and your soft tissues are gonna realize they need to make more receptors to give your brain feedback about where you are in space. So, if you're finding you have trouble with this, get into a little squat, get yourself balanced, close your eyes, and stay here till you start to get tired. Now, you may start to get shaky at the end of 30 seconds, maybe even 60 seconds, but go till you're fatigued, challenge yourself on that leg, then switch sides, do the other leg. Really concentrate and tune in to the ground so you can really feel where your foot is in space. Try to quiet down the micro corrections that your foot are making over time so you can really become 
still in your body. This is going to guarantee that every time you land on that foot, you're landing in a somewhat predictable foot position, body position. You're not getting away with a whole lot of subtle biomechanical deviation just because the turnover of running is fast. You can be pretty assured that every foot, every footfall is pretty precise and that you have a nice body position so that over the course of a 30 mile running week, you don't break down. Now, once you get the hang of this, you can make it more difficult by adding softer surfaces, standing in your squishy Hoka shoes, throwing a ball with a friend or with your kids or throwing a ball against the wall. Even balancing and turning your head from side to side will create confusion in your inner ear vestibular system that will make it harder for you. If you play a sport where there's a lot of head movement or you're following a ball, that can be really helpful. If you're trail running and you're looking around and you're following terrain where your eyes are distracted, it can also be really helpful. But as you get better at this, you can make it more dynamic. What you'll do then is you'll find your balance point, you'll close your eyes, and then you'll practice hopping to the next foot, seeing if you can balance. Start on the other foot, balance, get yourself steady, hop to the next foot, make sure you can land and balance. As you get better at this, you can practice hopping side to side, especially if you're a trail runner, get yourself balanced, jump to the side, see if you can refine your balance point. Jump back, see if you can refine your balance point. You can continue across the floor for a number of steps until you feel like you've uh, gained mastery over that movement. You can make the jumps bigger. And again, you can go back into your shoes. You can do it on soft, unpredictable surfaces. Tons of ways to challenge your balance ability and to improve how much you are processing your proprioceptive information with no visual feedback, just training that system. So you guys, go test your proprioception today. If you suck at it, spend a little time working on it. You're gonna be surprised that in just a week or two, this starts to get better. If you've had an ankle sprain recently or some type of an injury to your lower body, know that the, that system will probably suffer a little bit, especially after a severe ankle sprain where you lose a lot of that ability to feel where you are in space in your foot and ankle. So important for runners. Once you've mastered this, I think you're gonna appreciate how much it helps your running, especially if you're a trail runner, but know that it carries over to other sports as well, especially court sports, field sports, soccer, tennis. Um, huge reduction in injury risk in those sports, the more proprioceptive ability you have. Thanks for tuning in to Stability Wad today. Please click the like button if this resonates for you. Take a second to subscribe, leave comments or questions in the space below, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.